Hi, I'm Travis Thurston, and today we're going to talk about an architecture of engagement. This provides a, a structural framework for the work that we do in educational development. The first thing to remember is that student success is at the heart of our institutional core goals, and to get there, continued learning is key to improving practice. That learning is inherently a social process, and learning can be facilitated, in fact, accelerated through well-developed and supported organizational structures. So we want to create an architecture of engagement that provides for a social process in learning and that is well-developed and supports uh, a supportive structure. So we start with self-determination theory as our theoretical background. DC and Ryan teach us about autonomy, competence, and relatedness, and the importance that we have for learning, and specifically the motivation to learn, through these three elements. Autonomy speaking to our need to be agents of our own learning. Uh, competence, our, our need to feel like we've mastered or learned something well. And relatedness is that social aspect, how we learn from one another, and also how we share our own patterns of competence. Each of these is important to engage in reflective practice. And I talk about that in terms of three key terms, engage, implement, and contribute. As we think about those three elements and creating a structure, we need to consider how designing is a process of pattern synthesis rather than pattern recognition. So the solution is not simply lying there. It has to be actively constructed by the designer's own efforts. And Cross talks about this in terms of design thinking or designerly ways of knowing. We want to be constructive in our approach, meaning we're, we're building something. We want to be solution focused. We don't want to get buried in the problem. We want to look at how we can improve the situation. And of course, we want to be human centered, right? So we want to make sure that the individuals who are participating are really going to benefit from the structure that we create. These two elements, course design and course facilitation, are wrapped up in the term instructor presence. And the term instructor presence comes from the literature on the community of inquiry framework. The community of inquiry framework is actually a way for us to operationalize these ideas from self-determination theory directly into our classroom, or in this case, directly into the way that we, that we facilitate educational development. And these are referred to by the authors as teaching presence, cognitive presence, and social presence. So, remembering that student success is the heart of our institutional core goals, we also need to remember that our instructors are the lifeblood. It's really important that we have instructors interacting with our students. And the combination of teaching expertise and teaching excellence are less like the peak that one summits and rather are found in the ongoing struggle of setbacks and brief vistas while traversing the mountain ridge. In other words, put more emphasis on the process. We don't have to be perfect the first time. We don't have to be perfect ongoing. We're learning from our experiences. We're learning from each other. And the process is where we really gain a lot of that value. As we're creating that structure between engage, implement, and contribute, there are three important trusses that bridge the gaps between those three core areas. This is instructional development, as we're engaging our faculty and our instructors in learning the literature and what the evidence tells us about best teaching practice. Instructional design, as we learn how we're actually creating and planning intentionally uh, to engage our students. And then instructional practice, which is when we actually do the teaching in our classroom. So there's a number of theories that we're aligning into these three terms. DC and Ryan's self-determination theory, Vaughn and Garrison's community of inquiry framework, and then Culver approaches this in terms of professional mastery, professional agency, and professional accountability. And Kreber, in her foundational piece, talks about this in terms of teaching expertise, teaching excellence, and the scholarship of teaching and learning. 
So all of these align into these three key terms, engage, implement, and contribute. But they don't sit independent of one another. And I'd like to define them just a little bit more. So when we say engage, specifically in an architecture of engagement, we mean that we're empowering professional mastery through teaching expertise. When we say implement, we're empowering professional agency through teaching excellence. And contribute means that we're empowering professional accountability through the scholarship of teaching and learning. But again, those are very interconnected. So when we're creating this architecture of engagement, we have to consider how they overlap and how instructional development, instructional design, and instructional practice bridge the gaps between them. And that creates our architecture. So engage becomes that mastery and expertise as we're engaging in both instructional development and instructional design. Implement the agency and excellence is where our course design and course facilitation, that instructor presence, goes directly into practice. And contribute, or the accountability and the scholarship of teaching and learning, is where we both learn from the literature and contribute back to the literature. And that can be both formal and informal venues. But it's not complete. That's the architecture, right? As Dotson explains, an architecture of engagement should provide for shared emotional connection among members developing from the frequency and quality of social interactions as well as experiencing shared events and feeling as if they and others are personally invested in the group. That's the engagement, right? So we need to consider how our learning communities or which types of learning communities we're including in this architecture. But we need to start with our students. So think about learning communities in terms of student partnerships and how we as instructors can learn with and from our students. Next, considering all of our instructors, both tenure track and non-tenure track, adjuncts, and across the professorate, both new, mid, and senior level faculty. We also want to consider how we're engaging with local, regional, and national uh, teaching and learning organizations. And then, of course, we all want to make sure that we're engaging all professionals, uh, librarians, instructional designers, multimedia professionals, all can have profound impacts on the way that we structure and engage with one another. And those learning communities sit at the heart of that architecture which completes the architecture of engagement, both the structure and the interaction. And that is our architecture of engagement.